you always want to try to find the lowest possible dose of a nutritional supplement that works for you to get the desired outcome. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that with melatonin. Welcome everybody, thanks so much for joining me here today on this Cabral Concept episode dedicated to what I like to refer to as the miracle of melatonin. There are just some products out there that can help so many people with a vast array of health issues that it's worth noting those. In the past, you've heard about products like vitamin D or magnesium or omega-3s while well, melatonin is slowly but surely starting to fall into that category. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody should start taking this product. However, it is worth noting because I'm guaranteeing that you or someone that you know may benefit from temporary or prolonged use of melatonin. So, what is melatonin? Melatonin is a naturally occurring hormone in our body. Melatonin is what gets turned on when our eyes start to see and sense it getting dark. So basically there's that blue light in the morning as the sun and the ranges start to change towards dusk, cortisol should start to drop precipitously and melatonin should start to increase. So much so that by 9.30 p.m., somewhere between 9 and 10, depending on the seasons, of course, you will have your lowest levels of cortisol and melatonin then can start to rise because cortisol and melatonin are in an inverse ratio. So when cortisol's high, melatonin's low. When melatonin's high, cortisol's low. And that is how we get night and day, a diphasic rhythm. Diphasic just means as humans, we should start to slow down at six, seven o'clock at night and stay slowed down until about six, seven in the morning. And then six, seven in the morning till about six, seven at night, that's our 12 hours on and our 12 hours off. We humans though, in our modern day, don't like to follow this, which is why we burn out so easily. We have symptoms of anxiety, of depression, of uh, irritability and overwhelm and brain fog, and low energy, and low mood, and low libido, and all of these things. And much of it is because we've confused day from night and cortisol from melatonin. Remember, bright lights at night prevent melatonin from being produced. They keep the fight or flight and sympathetic nervous system going. So what I wanna share with you here today, because I have many podcasts, they're all obviously free, of how to create a great nighttime routine. So why don't we, again, you can always find them at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You can scroll through the top, look at the sleep-based ones because I have a whole category just on sleep. So please do feel free to check those out. But today let's focus on melatonin. Naturally, you can increase it by decreasing cortisol and also viewing the morning sunlight and then viewing the sun setting at night. That's a nice way to do it. Another way is make sure you stop eating three to four hours before bed. You don't want all that energy being ramped up if you eat right before bed. You also want to start to turn down the lights in your home or wear blue blocking glasses. I've got a great review for another blue blocker company coming up. Again, I recommend the best companies. Even if Equal Life offers blue blockers, I always recommend the best companies. So I'll be recommending another company. Now, very few people do that. And what I want to share with you is this too, is that you're going to get your best results from an evening routine. Everybody talks about a morning routine and I think that's great to start the day, but also have an evening routine. An hour wind down as you start to cool and calm the body. Now, one of those things though, that is going to help tremendously is with low dose melatonin. Now, I know a lot of people talk about high dose nutritional supplements and mega dosing and this, that, or the other thing. In our practice, I've been in practice a long time. I've used high dosing, I've used low dosing, I've used moderate, whatever. You always want to try to find the lowest possible dose of a nutritional supplement that works for you to get the desired outcome. So it's lowest minimum possible dose for desired outcome. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that with melatonin. But what I wanna do is share the main reasons why I said, oh, is this starting to turn into the new magnesium or vitamin D or omega-3s, et cetera? Well, here's the thing. We know that melatonin 
has always been referred to as the sleep hormone, which it does. It helps you fall asleep. There's no doubt about that. So what it, a lot of people don't know is it does that by actually knocking down cortisol as well. So for me, someone, it's very strange, right? So I had Addison's disease for many years, overcame that, overcame autoimmune issues, overcame type 2 diabetes, overcame a lot. But one of the ways I was able to do that was resetting my circadian rhythm, resetting my sleep. I produced almost no cortisol during the day and just a little bit at night. Well, that's the opposite of what you should do. You should produce cortisol in the morning and then it starts to fall throughout the day. So what I did, and one of the ways that was very helpful, is I started to use melatonin at night, about 30 minutes before bed. But here's the other interesting thing. Yes, it knocks down cortisol. People may not know this, but it's been proven in clinical studies, and I'm happy to link these up. I always back, up, back it up with the research. Melatonin, yes, it supports sleep. We know that. It helps amazingly with getting you to sleep and staying asleep. I'll, I'll talk about what happens if you wake up groggy or you wake up throughout the night. I'll talk about that. But it has been shown to help reduce seasonal affective disorder and depression. So we know that about 10% of the people, or more, but we know 10% for sure, are affected throughout the world by seasonal affective disorder, leading to lower mood and symptoms of depression, at least during the more winter and darker-based months. Great studies showing that melatonin helps with that. Why? It creates a better circadian rhythm. It's also a powerful antioxidant. I'll talk about that in just a moment with eye health. But for everybody out there looking to boost their hormones, okay, if you lower cortisol, you will naturally boost your sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA. But it also has been proven to help naturally boost human growth hormone to natural levels without having to supplement with HGH. That's pretty fantastic as well. That means it's going to help with recovery, bone repair, muscle, hair, skin, nails, all those great things associated with HGH. Now, as a powerful antioxidant, because melatonin is a powerful antioxidant, helps with free radical damage, helps with oxidative damage. It may be one of the reasons why it has been proven to help with conditions like glaucoma and age-related macular degeneration. So improving vision and clarity of vision. And again, these studies are done with just three milligrams with no more than six months to a year or two of use to get like amazing results. Okay. And again, the results come with most of these studies within the first six to 12 weeks up to six months. So we're not talking about long dosage, but people in the studies have continued on and, and continue to maintain that. Another one, acid reflux and GERD. So gastroesophageal reflux disease. A lot of people suffering with acid reflux. I've been talking about that. There, is, there are some great studies. A uh, study with melatonin alone or a meprazole, which is a GERD medication, acid blocker. Melatonin was effective at relieving heartburn and discomfort without the acid blocker. Pretty impressive, right? I mean, that's, that's amazing to see. So why? It's reducing stress hormones, powerful antioxidants, and many other factors in reducing the sympathetic nervous system. So pretty impressive. Those are just some of the big benefits. Acid reflux, depression, human growth hormones, hormones in general, sleep, of course, um, and then the age-related eye-based vision issues. So how much do you need? Well, most of the studies are done with three milligrams. That's always been the standard dose. In our practice, we use 2.5 milligrams, right below the standard dosage. But you can use more as needed. There's studies, um, many, many long-term studies, of anywhere between 0.5 to 10 milligrams per day. There, contrary to what you may be hearing, there is no, there is no good research with long-term detrimental effects of ongoing melatonin. So I just want to share with you that. Now, having said that, in the same breath, you want to use the lowest effective dose. So what that means is this. You take whatever dosage you need in order to fall asleep. If you have insomnia, like I used to have, you need to get to sleep. That's the truth. So I used to take 10 milligrams. But once I was asleep for three weeks, meaning like not fully asleep for a full three weeks, that would have been pretty impressive. But once I was in a sleep schedule and I fell asleep every night consistently within 10, 20 minutes of 10 milligrams, I reduced it then to 7.5. After I was sleeping for a few weeks with 7.5, no issues, 30 minutes before bed. I put it, basically, I put drops under my tongue that equal 10 or 7.5. Once I'm good for two to three weeks, then I reduced it to five milligrams. I was on five milligrams 
for probably a couple years. Then after that, I said, can I reduce it any less and still get great sleep? And where I settled in is about 2.5 milligrams per night. So what I want to share with you is this. Everybody's dosage is going to be different. We have some people in our practice all the way down to 0.5 to 0.1 milligrams. That's basically microdosing melatonin. And what happens is they get the benefit just with that small amount. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's just the placebo effect at 0.5 milligrams. Maybe it is. Honestly, like maybe it is at that small a dosage. But the truth is, we know melatonin works. We know how it works. And for those people, if that's what helps them fall asleep at that small a dosage, then why not? There's nothing wrong with that. So the nice thing is if you use a liquid melatonin, you can dose for the right dosage for you. The goal is to, after you're sleeping well for two to three weeks and you're getting the GERD results or the depression results or the whatever it is, the results that you want, you just continue to try to do a little bit less. And a full dropper is typically 2.5 milligrams. I can't link up the, the actual one that I use, but you can find it at stephencabral.com forward slash shop and just type in melatonin. Now, keep in mind, you can use any brand that you want. I just rem- I just recommend looking for uh, a clean ingredients. That's all. But melatonin by a functional medicine company is dosed appropriately because you always want to make sure you're getting the right amount. Now, what if you wake up with grogginess? If you wake up with grogginess, you most likely used too much. Okay. So what you need to do the next night is use a smaller dosage. Now, does it help you fall asleep? Yes or no? You're going to have to play with that a little bit, right? The other thing is if you're waking up throughout the night, Believe it or not, it can be from using too much, not necessarily too little. So using melatonin is a bio-individualized approach. You may or may not get it right the very first time. Most people, I'll be honest with you, most people do great with 2.5 to 5 milligrams with no grogginess or no waking throughout the night. However, if you do get that, you want to go to 2.5 milligrams. And that's why I recommend for most people, just start at 2.5 milligrams. That's going to be the sweet spot for most people where they get the most benefit with none of the grogginess. We also like the liquid because the liquid is in your system faster, gets you to sleep, processed easier into your bloodstream, especially if you drop it under your tongue, you hold it, and then after that, you're able to let it diffuse right into the bloodstream. So it doesn't even need to pass through the liver. So it's in your bloodstream faster, works faster, more effective, and then you don't wake up with all that grogginess. So that's the way that we use in our practice. Um, I think it can absolutely work for you. What if you're sleeping well and you don't have any of these um, potential health issues? You don't need it, right? Just like anything else. If you don't need it, you don't need to take the supplement. Now, what I want to share with you, the last thing is this. What about for children? What about for um, much older adults? Okay, for children, you can absolutely use it. We use it with my daughters a couple times. Here's how we do it. If they are changing the sleep schedules, uh, we've been on trips before to Australia, to Hawaii, to the West Coast, and if we want to reset that circadian rhythm, that's what we do. We just give them a small amount of melatonin. How much do my daughters get? No more than 0.1 milligrams. That's all they need. Like literally, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, They use more like one milligram, not the 0.1, they use one. So what is that? If a full dropper is 2.5 milligrams, they get about a third of that dropper uh, maximum. That's about what they get. And that's all they need. Kids respond even faster to it, right? Because they typically don't have as high the elevated cortisol levels. So that helps them get just back on that normal sleep schedule, especially if they're getting back to school. So you do that. That's pretty much the only time. Or if they're not feeling well, uh, and we know that they're not going to get a great night's sleep, that might be when they use it. But, you know, we're, we're talking about every couple months. So it's not often that they might use it for a night. Now, in older adults, believe it or not, you stop producing as much melatonin as you age, just like you start producing as much stomach acid, you don't produce as much hormones, etc. So older adults may find benefit with ongoing use of melatonin. So I'm not just getting yourself into a good sleep cycle, you may actually continue on with it. I know that I will be for sure. So, you know, if you're in your 60s and beyond, your melatonin may not be as adequate. Adding in anywhere from, let's say, 1.25 to 2.5 milligrams a night might be really nice for you. It has potential anti-cancer effects. Uh, It has powerful antioxidant effects. We already talked about the vision, improving the circadian rhythm. I think there's a lot of benefits to it. I really do. Just find a good 
uh, clean product, clean ingredients from a functional medicine-based company. Again, the one I formulate is for Equal Life, but you're always welcome to use your favorite company. Hopefully this was helpful. I will link up all the show notes here today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2694. stephencabral.com slash 2694. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.